Within Global Underground, Dean Belcher is a legend. His iconic photography gave Global Underground album covers and travelogues their legendary look. So to hear Dean Belcher describe himself as a flaneur, a French term describing an ambivalent figure of urban affluence and modernity, representing the ability to wander detached from society, makes you turn your head. But after learning about his adventures with Global Underground, the description becomes more clear. Dean Belcher never sought out Global Underground. Creators Andy Horsfield and James Todd reached out to Music Magazine looking for a photographer and Belcher had just photographed Goldie for their cover. Belcher was in the right place at the right time and got the recommendation. Belcher's first project for Global Underground would be GU6 featuring John Digweed in Sydney, except Dean wasn't going to Sydney with the crew. This album cover was shot in a studio in England. Four releases in, the idea and concept for Global Underground wasn't entirely fleshed out and Andy and James would bring along a press team from a magazine to take photographs and generate media for the release. The idea for the travelogue was manifested, pairing Dean with Dom Phillips and the two would work off each other to create tangible energy around the series. Their chief goal was to make listeners feel like they were there in the club, traveling the host city with the featured DJ's entourage. Dean Belcher didn't leave England until he was 21 years old, but he took to the traveling tour de force that was global underground. There's not one country in the world that I wouldn't want to go. Dean described global underground as hard work, and his schedule on a global underground trip was quite literally packed. First, there was his equipment. Dean would bring suitcases full of film to each shoot. He used Hasselblad cameras to shoot the covers and a Nikon to shoot the street and club shots. But Belcher says it's the person behind the camera, not the camera itself, that makes the difference. Then there was his actual schedule. Dean says that Andy and James gave him complete freedom and tasked him to shoot at all times. Whatever's going on, starting on the plane, all the way to the party at the club, shooting photo after photo after photo. These trips were truly madness, but Dean developed a method. There were three major parts to Dean's photography job for Global Underground. First was the cover photo. Every GU release would include a close-up shot of the featured DJ on the cover, and Belcher confirms that Global Underground was the first series to put the DJ on the cover of an album. Belcher admits the cover shots were hard work and said generally the DJs were a pleasure to work with, understanding how laborious a cover shoot throughout a city could be. I think Paul Oakenfold was quite well established. He had done lots of covers for magazines. I shot him a couple times before for magazines. I think John is quite a quiet guy. I don't think he really sort of embraces this stuff. I think Sasha, it just interrupted the party to him basically. James Lavelle is really professional about it. He's kind of well-dressed. He's got a good idea of how he wants to look. Felix brought a whole wardrobe. They're all quite different. Cover shoots create some of the most memorable moments on the GU trips, and there was added anticipation when you couldn't see the film until it was developed back home. Dean's most memorable cover shoot moment, Deep Dish arrived on time for a shoot in Toronto. We mentioned a time and I remember it. Meet down in the lobby at 1pm and we'll go and take some pictures. And they were there, 1 o'clock, ready to take some pictures. Global Underground was about more than music. It was about bringing dance music fans to an exotic clubbing location with photographs and written passages. When photographing for the travel log, Dean would slip out of the hotel when the rest of the crew were sleeping off last night's party and just start to wander. A lot of the time, I literally just turned left one day and right the next. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't want to map. I did this thing where I tried to not go back on myself. I would kind of do a circular motion, turning right one day, left the next, wandering around the city. A true flaneur. Sometimes Belcher would coordinate his escapades with Dom Phillips, who wrote the album notes, as well as shoot some of the films that would accompany the series' middle releases. Dean makes a point to note that between the city missions during the day and club missions at night, perhaps no one slept less on a global underground trip than himself remarkably. Dean's photographs of clubbers in cities across the world would serve as the most intimate accounts of underground dance culture in any era. Belcher's raw, unfiltered club photographs made you feel like you were right there on the dance floor. I get really excited by the people. Those big highs, those lows, when the DJ takes you up and down. What I get from it is really just euphoria. 
That's what feeds me when I'm taking the pictures. And the pictures were epic. Dean Belcher's photography for Global Underground showed that there was more than meets the eye when it comes to the Global Underground dance community. Naturally, the man behind the lens is equally surprising. I don't think I've ever listened to one of the CDs. I've heard them in the car occasionally. I kind of don't want to say it at times because there's loads and loads of people out there who will go, oh God, what a complete waste on this jerk. There is no requirement that to be a great photographer, you have to listen to underground dance music in your free time. A true testament to his skill and dedication to his profession, Dean made his distance one of his greatest strengths. It's a little bit of an outsider's view to a certain extent, like I was recording punks. Make no mistake about it, Dean Belcher is one of the most passionate music fans out there. His particular taste simply expands beyond underground dance music. He shares in the most humble manner possible. I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want people to think I'm some sort of asshole. I had kind of come up through a different world of funk and soul and reggae. If he had to choose a favorite album, something obvious but timeless like What's Going On by Marvin Gaye, perfection, he says. From GU6 with John Digweed to GU43 with Joris Vaughan, Dean Belcher has not one bad word to say about his experience with Global Underground. Sometimes Andy would ring me up and I'd be like, oh no, but as soon as he got on the plane, it was brilliant. The banter started, piss taking as we like to call it. It was fine, we are all back in it again. It's a bit like that sort of thing. If we get a call at 1am, like we're going to a club, let's get a move on. That's kind of how those trips went. But as soon as you kind of meet up and you're out, and the spirit like that is great. It's making that effort to get going. It is true that the superstar DJ stood at the center of Global Underground, but perhaps the man behind the lens left the biggest impact on the series.